This one has been a long time coming. This video is not sponsored by any of the companies mentioned. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play, and today I am going to try the Schmincke Horridum Aquarelle watercolors. And this one is the 24 half pan set. And then I also bought some single pans as well because I'm a firm believer that your palette should be your palette. And there's a couple of colors in here that while I love, like I really love the color selection we have here, there's a couple that I am, that have a little bit of a lower light fast ratings than the others. And because I like to sell my artwork, I want to have a palette that I can go to and not have to worry about the light fast ratings. So I'm going to switch five of these colors out so that I can have higher light fast ratings and also because there were some colors that I just wanted to try and have in my palette that I liked a little bit more than some of the colors in here. So I will keep the the ones that I'm switching out for sketchbook work and things like that. They will still get use, but for artwork that I want to sell, I'll have a palette that I can go to and not worry about light fastness. And overall, the light fast ratings on this palette are not bad at all. It's just that I saw that some were a little lower than others, and I thought it was a good opportunity to get some colors that I'd really like to try out instead. So first, let's go over what comes in this set, and then I will talk about what I'm going to switch out, and then I'll do some swatching, and of course, I am going to do a project because that's how I like to test things out. Let's talk about what we have in this set. It is beautiful. I am so excited. It comes with this little swatch card so you can create your own color chart and then obviously we've got the classic black tin schmincke horror and i apologize if i mispronounce any of this i'm trying my best here okay all right plenty of mixing space you know your standard metal palette all right so what do we have for colors here this set comes with lemon yellow cad yellow light Cadmium Yellow Hue Deep. This is uh, Chromium Orange Hue, Cadmium Red Light, Perylene Maroon, Permanent Carmen Magenta, Manganese Violet Indigo Ultramarine, Prussian Blue, Helio Cerulean, Helio Turquoise, Thalo Green, May Green, Cobalt Green Dark, Permanent Green Olive, Naples Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, uh, English Venetian Red, sepia brown and ivory black so it's got a great selection look at those pretty pans i've mentioned this when i've reviewed watercolors before but these look like little wrapped caramels i mean i'm a candy fiend so i can't help myself but oh, they just look delicious even though it's paint don't eat your paint kids don't eat your paint okay so the colors that i have that i'm going to be supplementing i got a couple of the super granulating colors because I've been wanting to try them and I probably will get more of these if I fall in love with this palette which I have a feeling I'm going to enjoy myself. I have the forest brown which is a super super granulation color and then the volcano yellow and I have cobalt turquoise, the quinacridone magenta, and then Payne's Gray Bluish. And the colors that I'm going to replace, I'm going to put the Payne's Gray Bluish instead of Indigo, even though it's not going to be as blue as I would like. But I figured I could add other blues to it if I want to. The Cobalt Turquoise is going to replace the Helio Turquoise. It's a little, it's a lighter turquoise, but I'm more apt to use this color anyways because I'm a sky girl and I really enjoy using these kinds of colors in the sky. And then I'm going to replace... The magenta with the quidacridone magenta and I'm going to replace the lemon yellow with the volcano yellow and then this isn't like an even swap out but I'm going to take the what is this one chromium yellow hue deep out and I will be having my forest brown which will be kind of down here somewhere I don't use a ton of yellows anyway, so I think the two yellows in the palette will be just fine. And if I want something similar to this chromium yellow hue deep, I can add the chromium orange hue to it to, to warm it up a little bit and kind of 
make it closer to that. So I'm going to be pretty happy with that, I think. Again, like I said, if you're working with a palette, make it what you want it to be because you're the one working with it. So I'm going to take out the colors that I don't plan on using in my work that I'm going to sell. And again, the light fast readings aren't too horrible. I mean, this one's got a two on it. And I think the rest of them are like threes, but these are all fours and fives. And so it's just, you know, a little bit better. Give myself a fighting chance here. Give my artwork a fighting chance. And I put little dots on them so I knew which ones. And I'll probably rearrange anyway because I'm going to want to put them in order by how I'm going to work anyway. And what I like to do when I am unwrapping everything, which I'm going to do off camera because that takes forever. I like to mark my pans with the pigment information and light fast information. And so I'm going to do that again off camera. I'll show you what that looks like after. It's not pretty, but I'll have the information I want. Okay. So I'm going to start unwrapping things and putting them in the order that I want. And then I'll come back, let you know how that's going and probably do some swatches. Okay, so I have a bit of a mess here, but I just wanted to talk for a second about pigment. I am not a pigment expert in any way, so I can't really answer questions about specific pigments. However, I just wanted to mention that I was looking at the originals and I counted and there's six of these that have more than one pigment in them. But then the rest are all single pigment, so I thought you might want to know about that because I know a lot of people like to only work with single pigments. I don't think that's very bad. The majority of the original set has single pigments. So just thought I'd let you know in case that's something you're interested in because I have heard people say that they prefer working with single, single pigments because... It, it's cleaner mixes and things like that. So I thought that that was pretty good. My set is going to have more than just six that have numerous pigments because my Forest Brown has three pigments in it and my Payne's Gray has multiple pigments in it as well. So if you're interested in getting the original set, it's a, a fairly clean set as far as pigments go. Okay, I have them all unwrapped and I have them in the order that I like to work in. I might rearrange later, although I did write down the order that I had it in on my swatch card. So we'll see. I'm starting out with magenta and then just kind of going through. <laughs> Hopefully I'm, my, my forest green, which I have up here, is a little bit of a, I mean my forest brown. It's a little bit of a wild card. I don't know how it's going to be when it's swatched out. So it might be more brown than it actually looks in the pan. But you know, look how, I don't know, this is so exciting. I love the order. I don't know. I just think it's really pretty. I love just seeing the pans in here. They're so pretty untouched. They're about to get mangled because I'm going to use the heck out of them. But yeah, so I'm going to swatch on this card for what's in the palette. And then I do have some Fluid 100 hot press paper. I'm sorry if you hear my furniture squeaking. It's driving me batty. But anyway, some Fluid 100, 100% cotton hot press watercolor paper. I work on this paper often. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, I'm going to swatch these other ones on this paper because then I'll know how it works on this paper and we'll get an idea of what these colors that I took out of the palette look like. Just so you can see what they look like in case you want to get this palette and keep those colors in there. And then I'm going to be working on a different paper when I do my project. So it's going to be giving me a nice full feel of how these work on different paper. Now I am going to swatch. I am really happy with the saturation. However, this just goes to show that paper makes all the difference because as I'm doing this voiceover, I've already done my project and I know <laughs> that these work a lot better on a quality paper than they do on this swatch card. I'm not impressed by this paper. It is thin and I don't like the texture. It kind of goes horizontally and it carries paint into other paint because it's just taking it right out of the rectangles. Also, during this, I noticed that my forest brown and my volcano yellow, which were the super granulating, are not as saturated as the other colors around them. Took a lot more layers. So that was something that I needed to keep in mind when it came time to work on my actual project. 
Okay, so here are the swatches of the 24 that I have in the palette. I think they're very beautiful. I'm not a huge fan of this swatch paper, but I mean, it worked. Like you can get an idea of the colors, but I definitely had a harder time with it the way it sunk into the paper. I don't know, it's just kind of strange. I'm not a swatcher, so these are not gonna be the most beautiful swatches. I'm just saying, I don't typically swatch, but with watercolor, I do think it's helpful because the color is gonna come out looking a lot different than it does in the pan. And so this is one time that I actually do swatch. And then here are the five colors that I had taken out of the palette and replaced. And I did these on a hot press paper and definitely beautiful, works well on the hot press paper. Although I do think I'm going to be liking them more on a cold press paper and I am going to be doing my project on the cold press paper. This is the paper that I'm going to be working on. It's by Zen Art. It is their 9 by 12, 100% cotton watercolor paper. And it is a cold press, but it's not overly textured. I just really love it. And they sent this paper to me back when I reviewed their watercolors. But I really, really love this paper. So I've actually been craving working on this paper. I just love the texture and everything else. So this is what the project is going to be done on. So I'm eager to see how well they do on this. I have a feeling they'll do great. And yeah, so now I have an idea. Like these, this was kind of a cold press texture, but it's very thin. And then this is 100% cotton. And the other one that I'm going to be working on is 100% cotton. But this one's a little bit of a warmer white. So that kind of gave me an indication of what these would look like. And it's hot pressed. And yeah. So I will be keeping these colors. They are beautiful. Actually kind of a fun color palette in and of itself. So I think it'd be fun to do a... I don't know, a sketchbook thing with just these five colors, which I might do down the line. Let me know if you'd like to see that. And then here is my main palette where I will be doing artwork that I will sell from. Everything in this palette, now that I have switched them out, should be good light fastness wise between 50 and 100 years. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Eager to try them out for my project. So I am going to switch to time lapse and voiceover for that. Okay, so jumping into the project now, I want to say I've just recently been really getting back into watercolors the past couple years, so I am not an expert in watercolors. I'm just going to speak about my own experience dealing with this palette because this is my art journey and I like to take you all along with me. I am going to be painting some poinsettias today. Yes, I know. It's not Christmas time anymore. We're getting closer to Valentine's Day and I'm painting poinsettias. But I had intended to do this back around Christmas time, but I got sick with the flu. And then I had to wait for certain supplies because I decided I wanted to switch out a couple colors. And so here we are. I still really wanted to paint this. I've been wanting to paint a poinsettia painting for years. I did one back in like 2011. And now that I've grown as an artist, I've been wanting to do another one. So here we are. Just pretend that this is... um more of a Valentine's theme than it is a Christmas theme, and we'll just keep moving on. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about these paints. I feel weird even doing a video about these paints, honestly, because they have such a fantastic reputation already. Like, what else can I say about these paints? They're a well-known brand, and they are highly recommended by many artists on YouTube, which is why I ended up getting them. So I don't know what I can really add to it. I had a fantastic experience with these and I figured that I would. They are vibrant and they layer really well. I was really impressed with the layering, honestly. And that's something that is really important for me because I like to do a lot of layers. And they definitely are saturated and beautiful. There is a varying amount of between the opacity in this set, in the original set. I think the most opaque color that I had in this set was the Naples yellow. And that actually worked in my favor in certain areas because I was able to use that because it was such a like kind of a neutral color. It wasn't quite white white that I was able to like mix it with my green and my red to make things pop in certain areas if I needed to. Like if I had gotten too dark with a red in a certain area or too dark with a green, I was able to use my Naples yellow to lighten up those colors and paint over the spots that I wanted to lighten up if I wasn't able to lift enough. Of course, 
there's a varying degree of staining power in these colors as well. And so there were some areas that I wasn't able to lift as easily as others. And so, especially in the darker reds and things like that, definitely great staining power. But yeah, that Naples yellow came in handy for that. And as I said, because it's not white, you know, a lot of times titanium white, if you have like, you know, an opaque white in your watercolor set, it will blue things out a little bit. It'll cool things down a little bit. Whereas Naples yellow obviously is more of a warm color. And so it mixed really well with these warm greens and obviously red. Of course, I wanted to make sure I used more red than the Naples yellow. I just needed the opacity of the Naples yellow to be able to paint over things. And that worked out really well. You're going to see me come in. I'm not using anything special for brushes. I think they're basically the Artify brushes from Amazon. A couple like cheap different brands from Amazon. I am not somebody who spends an exorbitant amount of money on brushes. And so these are basically just Taclon brushes. Some of them actually held the water really well and worked out. But some of them obviously not as much as a regular watercolor brush would. But I get questions a lot about what brushes I'm using. I don't spend a lot on my brushes. They're basically the Artify ones. And I don't know what the other company is, that gray one that I was using. But anyway, and you'll also see me pop in and out with some colored pencils because I am using those as a resist. So some of the veins, I like the middle veins, the ones that are lighter, I used colored pencil as a resist for those. And then for some of the darker areas, I used the scraping technique where... I took the wooden stylus that you see there and while the paint was still wet, I went in and indented little marks in the paper so that those marks would fill up with the watercolor and darken. And so that's how I'm getting those dark veins there. And you've seen other artists do this. Lindsay, the frugal crafter, does this often on her channel. She usually does like a credit card scraper, like she keeps old gift cards and it does it that way. It's a great technique. I... I've heard her talk about it on her channel quite a bit, and I just think it's a very exciting and fun technique to use. And it came in handy on the veins on all of these little flowers here. And then obviously I am using smaller brushes for finer details as well. But all in all, I really enjoyed this process. I was a little bit worried because I'm used to using Holbein watercolors and Holbein allows for a lot of control. And I wasn't sure how well I would be able to, like, to a degree with watercolor, you have to let go because you're not always able to control what happens. That's one of the beautiful things about watercolors. But me being the type A personality that I am, <laughs> I think it's type A. Anyway, I like to have some control. And I actually was really pleasantly surprised here. Even with my, the super granulating colors, they did what I needed them to do. And speaking of the super granulation colors, I had the volcano yellow, I think, and the forest brown. And the forest brown is more of like a really dark olive green. Those were fantastic. And of course, I mixed them with other colors as well. So you're not going to get as much granulation when you're mixing them as if you use them singly. But I really loved that yellow because it created beautiful textures in the white flowers because, you know, you want that kind of grainy texture a little bit for petals and for leaves. It works really, really well. And so I mixed that a lot. Actually, I used a lot of the may green which is not a granulating color and i mix that with the the volcano yellow and that's how i got these flowers actually technically i guess these are leaves and not petals i was looking it up because i was looking for keywords when i uploaded this on my fine art america this is available as prints by the way i'll link that in the description but i always kind of look up my subject so i can get keywords and i learned a little bit about these um actually the little middle part is the actual flower and these petals are a type of leaf and I never knew that but anyways there you go the more you know I'll still probably call them petals <laughs> throughout this video so don't come at me but it is what it is it's a hard habit to break and I had to be careful because the red obviously red is just so vibrant so I had to figure out how to get these white ones to stand out amongst the red 
and they're really just like a green, you know, the May green worked perfectly for it. I also wanted to be mindful not to make the white ones too dark. And in that way, the volcano yellow really helped because as I mentioned earlier, it's a little bit tougher to get the saturation there. It's kind of a lighter color and the May green can actually come on pretty strong. So I think using a little bit of that volcano yellow helped it so that it wasn't darkening the flowers too quickly. I also wanted to mention that even though this looks like it would be a limited color palette, I actually used every paint in this palette at least once. I used some of the blues and purples and browns and the shadows and things like that. So I did get to handle each of them individually. I'm also really impressed with the way they look on this cold press paper. I just think it's beautiful. Of course, I was pretty impressed with the swatches I did on hot press as well. Again, I was not impressed with the swatch card that they provided with the set itself. So it just goes to show quality paper does really help. I have to say, I really, really thoroughly enjoyed myself and I love how this piece came out and these paints did everything I needed them to do. They layered, they had a great balance within the set. Even with me changing things out, I think even before me changing it out, there was a great balance in the set between like opaque colors and transparent colors. And yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. So what do you think? Have you used these paints before? If so, let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think of them. All right, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a great day, bye. If you found value in this video, please feel free to hit the like button, hit subscribe and share so others can see it as well. Thank you.